Okay, so I've done loads of videos on a Pi 4 and uh, it's a tiny single board computer which is very, very capable. Uh, the Pi Zero also is pretty impressive for retro gaming and various other things you want to do with it. But I've also been sent a Raspberry Pi Pico and I hadn't realized before I got this how small they are. That's the size of my thumb and that is the Pico. And there's loads of things you can do with it and I've been sent a kit from 52Pi. So let's have a look at what comes with the kit. An active buzzer, some LED lights, two 20-pin headers, two 3-pin headers, a display module, a 4-in-1 8x8 RGB matrix, a 16 RGB NeoPixel ring, PIR motion sensor, 15 resistors, loads of jumper wires, a servo pack, a micro USB cable, a half-size breadboard, and it all comes packed in this plastic box. And it comes with a book which has various different projects in it uh, and it basically starts you off. And so I'm going to go from the start because I've never done any of this before. Uh, I've only really concentrated on the Pi and the Pi Zero. But uh, yeah, there's all sorts of things in here and you can see all the wiring circuits are in there and uh, various different projects. So let's give it a go. So the first thing it says in the book that you need is a Raspberry Pi Pico with pin headers. But then it says need soldering. And uh, that's the only thing I haven't done at the moment before I start. So in order to be able to do all of this, I need to solder these pin headers on. So this is what the pin headers look like. Uh, and they fit into the Pico. So you can see the Pico's just got a load of holes on it. So if I pop those in like that, that's one. And that's two. Now if I put the breadboard out, this is something that I can pop it on so it's gonna hold it in place. Uh, because I've got to solder each one of these little pins in place and I haven't soldered for ages and I was always never good at soldering and this is what my soldering iron looks like it's very old I think it still works uh, I've actually ground down the tip because it was like a flat screwdriver and it was about out to here it was really quite big uh, and obviously these are tiny so I don't know if this is even going to work for me um, it's uh, it's so hard to see because it's so small uh, but uh, I've also got some solder uh, and I'm going to use that which is quite thick but hopefully I'm going to be able to keep it apart but let's give that a go so the first side uh, is really rough and uh, the soldering iron wasn't hot enough when I started and you, you kind of need to get a bit of technique going the second side I got going a bit better I mean as long as they're making a connection I'm fine with it I'm not really worried about how it looks so now I need to switch over to my Pi 4 which I've got booted up here so this is a fresh install of Raspberry Pi OS and I need to download the demo code which is this one here so let's copy that into the browser and you can see down the bottom so if we go to the downloads folder you can see here it is so this is a .uf2 file and now we need to pop some things into terminal now the code that was there before was all separate lines so I've added these and and uh, which basically means that it will skip on to the next line after it's finished the one it's on. So let's copy that. Control Alt T to open a terminal and paste it in and hit return. There you go. So that's installed and is working. So let's close that down and uh, we need to copy this into a terminal. Okay, so project one LED blinking, water flowing, control servo, display CPU temperature. Uh, oh, that'll be an interesting one. So uh, I can do that by folders as well though, so I don't need to do it by the terminal. So if I go to folders, file system root, home, pi, pico kit. And demo code so this is the demo code I'm gonna need in a minute so let's open up the blinking LED one there you go so this is the code but I need to set up my Pico now so you can see here's my Pico I've got it on a breadboard I've actually plugged in the wires that uh, it says on the first demo but I'll go through that again in a minute um, but let's plug this in to my Pi 4 and let's select start 
and Programming and Thony, and then Run, select Interpreter, and we need to change this to MicroPython Raspberry Pi Pico. And for the port, let's click on that, Board in FS mode. I'm going to do Install or Update Firmware. It hasn't detected my Pico at the moment, so I'm going to unplug it, press and hold the button, and then plug it back in again and keep holding that button. Uh, now it's shown up as a mass storage device. So if I was to click on that, click OK, uh, you can see, if I double click on this one, that opens in Chromium and it's all the documentation. So you can see various different things in here. So let's close that down and have a look at the other one. So info UF2, so UF2 bootloader version 2. OK, so everything looks fine there. Let's close that down. You can see this has all picked it up now, so I'm going to hit install and close. OK, so let's try and save this. So file, save copy, Raspberry Pi Pico, and then save it to main.py. So I guess this bit I do is main.py and OK. I guess that's done it. It was pretty quick, but it isn't a lot of code. So let's try pressing play. And initially nothing happens, but if I put a bit of pressure on the Pi, you can see that it's flashing red, which is exactly what it's supposed to do. So what happens now if I unplug this? So if I stop that and come out of that and then disconnect from the Pi, and my mains power supply here has got two USB sockets in it, so if I plug it straight into that, so that will start up the Pico, and if I push down, yeah, so that's working as well. So I basically uploaded that code to the little Pico, and uh, as long as I keep my finger on it, I do need to have a look at why I need to keep my finger on it. It must be uh, that the pins just aren't making a good enough connection, whether that's my solder or whether it's something to do with the breadboard. Okay, so let's change some of these numbers and let's move everything down to 0.1. So I'm guessing this value is LED not switched on. So let's go 0.1 and 0.1. So let's try file, save copy, yeah, to the Pico. I guess I could just overwrite that. Yeah, main.py and OK and yes. So let's hit play. Yeah, that's definitely doing what I thought it would. As you can see now, there was nothing wrong with the breadboard uh, or my soldering. It was just that I didn't push it down hard enough. You do have to push it down reasonably hard, but you can see I can pick it up by the Pico and it still carries on flashing. This next one is project two, which is the water flowing LEDs. So weirdly, if I run the water flowing LED script, it does this to the servo. But if I put the correct script in, so file, open, list computer, control servo, and then save a copy to the Pico. And yes. If I now run the script, doesn't do anything at all, just this, the servo doesn't move at all. Okay, so next up I tried to get the LCD display to work and uh, I tried several times and uh, it wasn't working using the methods I'd kind of learnt before, but there's some extra steps on this one. So file and open and on this computer. So we need to find the LCD display, here we go, display CPU temperature. So let's open that up and save that to the Pico in main.py as we're used to doing and yes now it says we've got to create a lib directory on pico so if i go file and open raspberry pi pico uh, i've got to create ah uh, there we go new so right click a new directory lib and hit ok so now we need to save two files in this lib folder on the pico so let's close this down and navigate to the files. Uh, so on the on my computer, uh, in my Pico Kit folder and lib, I've got this LCD API. So I'll open that up, and then I'll save that, save as on the Pico, in the lib folder, and I want to call it the name that it is, which is. This one here, lcdapi.py. 
So let's copy that. Call that the file name. Oh, it won't let me paste it in, so I'll do lcd underscore api dot py. Okay, so that's that one saved. So while I was doing all that, I decided it would be a good idea to uh, copy over all those lib files. Uh, and so if I go on the Pico now, go in the lib folder, you can see I've got four different ones in there now. So let's quit out of that and uh, let's hit stop and play. And now we have a working screen with temperature monitor on it. And as you can see, it says, hello, RPI Pico. And uh, it took ages. Uh, and the part of that was because of the instructions. So I've got a handwritten note on my instructions. Obviously, this was an early build of it. Um, but also, the picture is wrong, as is on the website. So you can see how far over it is here. The yellow and the green pin attached to the Pico are near that little tiny uh, rectangle. But if I go onto mine, they need to be all the way over here, uh, so nearer the CPU. And uh, obviously that's really frustrating when you're trying to get it to work and nothing's happening, um, but it is working now. And while I've got it working, uh, let's change this text. And let's have my channel on there. So let's go file, save copy on the Pico. Oh, we've got to stop the Pico first. File, save copy on the Pico, main.py, and yes. And stop and play. And here we go, much better. Um, and I was showing the wiring circuit of the uh, motion sensor just now, but it is the same for this one with just the screen. It is still in the wrong place. And I've just copied over the code for the motion detector. And so if I move down to the screen, you can see move detected because the motion detector is facing me. So if I stay still for a second and then move, you can see that move detected shows up. And here's the wiring for that one. And this is the matrix display. So if I hit play and have a look at the display, I was really impressed with this. It's super bright, nice and smooth, and uh, you can customize what sort of text is on there. And you can see here, it actually tells you the temperature of the CPU as well. 26.11 degrees. And if we have a look at the Python script, so if I just stop that running, uh, you can see this was the message it was showing. And at the end, it shows the temperature. You can see this bit here. So I could get it to show it without the temperature, uh, or I could just show the text. So if I say, Thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe the PSP video. And then save that. So file, save copy on the Pico in main.py and yes. And I didn't have to do anything in the lib, but I did copy over those lib files before. So if I go in and show you what's on my Pico. So these are the four things that I've had to copy over I'm not sure if that one is to do with the uh, matrix display. I think it might be. Um, but uh, as long as they're in the lib file, it seems to access them anyway. So it must be something in the script that tells it to go. In fact, here we are, look, display equals max 7219. So it is using that one there, uh, little plugin or whatever you call it. I don't know the, uh, the correct terminology. So let's hit play on that. And as you can see, it's working fine. So thanks for watching. Uh, but also, so this is running from the Pi at the moment. I've got it plugged in with a micro USB, and then obviously all the cabling is going over to this matrix display. So let's stop that uh, here, and you can see that it just freezes on that screen. And uh, I'm going to close down the Pi. And you'll see that that goes off because it takes power away from it. And I'm going to plug this into a power brick. So this is a, a power brick, you can see 88% battery life. Uh, if I plug that in, straight away it comes on. Now, because it's very low power, sometimes my power brick goes off thinking that it's actually uh, not running. Uh, it depends what you're running on the Pico, but certain things use so little power. But uh, this means that it's completely portable now. Uh, so I could have a message to people who drive too close to me in the car. But I've been really impressed with this Pico. It's definitely something I'll have a look at in, more in the future. And certainly different projects, certainly combining different things. If you've got some code 
that relates to the bits that are in here that you've done something impressive. Uh, if you link it to me, I'll have a look at it, and if it's great, I'll show it in Pi News. Okay, so thanks very much for watching. Please like and subscribe.